1982. I received a telephone call from a friend of mine, Jesse Jackson. We were very close. And I said, he said to me, he said, Ed, <clears throat> I want you to go to the Middle East with me. I said, what do you mean? He said, I'm going over to visit Jerusalem and Jordan. I said, on one trip? He said, yes. Yeah. I said, no, I'm not going. Ain't going to get me killed. <laughs> stay here and go over there and get killed if you want to. I'm going to stay here and pray for you. <laughs> he said, that's exactly why I'm asking you to go with me. I want you to pray for me. He said, now I have, doc I mean, I have journalists and I have lawyers and I have council of churches and everybody else going, but I need a prayer partner. And I said, well, Jesse, we are prayer partners. A lot of people don't know Jesse prays, but he's quite a prayer partner. Whenever a Negro runs president of the United States, he prays. <laughs> prays. And I said, no, I'm not going, I'm not going. And he said, well, pray about it. And in two days... I had two reasons I made up my mind. I don't have time to tell you about it, but when we got, when we got to Jerusalem, the first encounter, over a hundred cameras and newsmen surrounded the plane, and I got disconnected from Jesse, and they were pushing me back, 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 and Jesse turned around and said, hey, he's with me, and they opened up. And they let me come on in. And then when we got that night, the mayor of Jerusalem gave us a banquet. And I didn't have no tickets. And I was at the door trying to get in and the Jews didn't know me. But Jesse saw me at the door and he said, hey, he's with me. And the man said, oh, please, honored guests, come on in. <laughs> and Jesse stood up and said, you must give the Palestinians their right to a homeland. And everybody frowned in that building. And on, en route back to the hotel, they stoned our bus. And I was on the floor with Jesse. I said, man, you could have written that and sent it over here. You didn't have to come over here and say all that. <laughs> and the next day, we went to the West Bank where the Palestinians were. And when the bus rolled up, 10,000 Palestinians surrounded it, talking about Jesse, Jesse. And they picked him up physically, and they were packing him on upstairs, and Jesse, flat on his back, said, that big one is with me. <laughs> and they grabbed me and took me on upstairs. And when we got in the assembly of the Palestinian mayors, and these youngsters, 13 and 14 years old, with machine guns or automatic pistols all around the wall. And Jesse got up and said, you must let the Jew have a right to live at peace. And everybody cocked their guns. <laughs> and I stood up and said, I want to explain what Jesse's trying to tell you all. <laughs> and then we went on to Jordan. And when we cross Jordan, oh bless his name, when we cross Jordan, King Hussein had nine Mercedes-Benz limousines waiting on us to carry us to Amman, Jordan. And naturally being with Jesse, I walked up to the biggest and the best one, and I attempted to get in, and the guard says, no! And I... I said, uh, Jesse, and he said, he's with me. <laughs> and the man said, please. When we got to Jordan, we went to the palace, and that palace was so elaborate until every chair had a waiter. Not every table, but a waiter per chair. And I went in and attempted to sit down up near the crown prince, and the man said, who are you? You're not to sit here. And Jesse said, he's with me. And the man said, please. <laughs> and then the crown prince said, you can buy nothing in Jordan. Whatever you need in Jordan is yours as a gift. And I went home and I thought about eating something because they just had a few little hors d'oeuvres. And I looked at the price. I said, well, I can't eat here. But then it occurred to me. I'm guest of the king. And I got me a filet mignon. 
and I sent out my clothes and I got the telephone and talked for over an hour and a half to my wife. I'm yes of the king. And then Jesse and I parted. And I came on back and he went where he was. But then it began to occur to me that one glad morning, when this life is over, and when I get to the gates, and when justice will stand there and won't let me in, Jesus is going to say, he's with me. famous house. You may have never been welcomed to the governor's house. You may have never had an invitation like Paul and like pastor to come to the Oval Office. And that may never be your lot. You may never rise in this world no higher socially than you are now. But if you accept Jesus one of these days you, 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 little miss nobody on the television. That's where you think you are. Jesus is going to say, and he's going to point you out specifically. My mama who never, who never did anything but scrubbed. One of these days, Jesus is going to say, she's with me. I wasn't in Jordan for three days living like a king but heaven will be forever yeah. your heads bowed and there's somebody here tonight you have not you have not done it you have not done it and there's somebody listening to me and particularly those friends of mine you fellows in prison that I hear from and you write me your lot here on earth may not change but right in prison you can become guest of the king and so if you have not prayed that prayer all over this building bow your head and the pastor has already told us magnify and maximize your sin tell the Lord you're a sinner and that you've sinned that's what sinners do and tell him, save me, Lord. Save me. All over the building, save me, Lord. Save me now. And then those of you who have experienced a salvation, but you have wandered away from home, say, forgive me, Lord. And right tonight, I feel led of the Spirit on television and here. Who will just stand and say, save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. I see you standing. Who will just stand and say, I need to pray that prayer. Save me, Lord Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Come on here. Come on. Come on here. Come here. Come home tonight. Come home. Come home. Save me. Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Workers and counselors will meet you. Because I believe God is going to call you from the balcony and wherever you are, just without shame, without shame, come down here and say, Preacher, I'm in need of salvation. If I die tonight, I'd go to hell. I want to be saved. And then somebody get on up and say, Preacher, I am saved, but I have backslided. I'm cold. I'm indifferent. I'm not faithful nowhere where I'm working. Come on here now. Come on here now, wherever you are. As the pianists and others come to sing that, come home. Come home. Where's another? Where's another? Come on. Yes, 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 yes. 